Good morning, Ben. The pictures you are looking at are of Mission Furniture, a style popular in the first two decades of this century. Its leading proponent was this man, Gustav Stickley. Recently, the piece you were to have worked on was stolen, authorities believe, by these men, Walter and Steve Assant, international furniture thieves. Although law enforcement agencies have been put on the case and various suspects have been questioned, they have failed in finding the furniture. Your mission, should you decide to accept it, is to find that piece, refinish, reupholster, and return it to its rightful owner who has been distraught since its disappearance. Should you or any of your FOTM force be caught or killed, the secretary will say, I don't know you guys from Adam. Good luck. Mario, hands on the desk. Okay. On this mission desk, you must say. It's here. Peter Lupus dropped it off. Well, we didn't have time to traverse the globe, you know. We wanted to get uh, De Niro to recreate that scene from the mission, you know, where, where he comes over the, the waterfall. Right. But we didn't have the budget for it. Besides, he's busy. He's in training. He's getting fat and short to play Spanky McFarlane in Raging Rascal. You know Joe Pesci's playing Porky in that one? <laughs> this perfect casting. <laughs> Anyway, welcome to the Mission Show. We have a, a rocking chair and a desk slash table. That's what are we right. going to do to the desk? Well, the desk, the, bo the base of the desk is in pretty w good condition, but the top needs se severe uh, attendance, and we're going to resurface the top. First, I'm going to fill this. Uh, well, after it's resurfaced, this will be filled. We'll do a burn in here. And we've got some other minor little holes here. I think somebody went around with an ice pick and just like, decided to take their, their anger out on it. The finishing, we're going to duplicate. What they used to do is they used to fume the, the furniture back in the 1900s. Which in a is, tent. And into the tent, they would apply these little saucers of uh, ammonia, 26% ammonia, which is what you can get from a blueprint shop. And uh, they'd put these vats in, and the ammonia gas reacts with the tannin in the wood, and it would turn it a nice dark brown color. And then they would follow that up with a light shellacking and then a black wax. And we'll show you how to do that. Now, with this lovely rocker, I'm going to clean this down with some naphtha and steel wool, and then as was the case with most mission furniture, put a piece of leather on the seat. I'm going to be ready to start now resurfacing the top. And I'm going to use a belt sander. This is an industrial belt sander. It's got some heft to it. And you want one that's heavy so that it stays even on the table. And wear a dust mask, too. If you don't wear a dust mask, you're going to be breathing in all the dust, and you don't want to do that. So ground control, I'm ready. This, this cord also I like to put over my neck so it doesn't get in the way. And by the way, what? Who do you think's gonna do alfalfa? In Raging Rascals? Uh-huh. Tall drink of water, Goldblum. Uh, how about Daniel Stern? We need <laughs> tanks. Tom Hanks is the man. It depends. We'd have to audition. Who's who, the worst singer? Who can sing best or worse in this case? And I'll brush this off, and then we can continue with the orbital. The orbital? With an 80 grit paper, a garnet paper. I've got a wet rag here. I'm just going to wet it. This is going to raise the grain. And when the grain is raised, <laughs> be able to come back and hand sand and cut the fibers off. I can leave the sandpaper right in the middle, because I'm going to go around, I'm going to do the perimeter of the entire surface, and then I'm going to come back, fill in the inside. And this you do repeatedly until the level, the surface becomes level. This is called surfacing by hand. You see why in the old days it took so long to do a piece of furniture properly? because they knew that the finished product is only going to look as good as the sanding job. 
a sand again, perimeter, and then fill in the center, but we're using 100 grit this time. Once upon a time, there was a papa bear and a bunch of baby bears. Well, there's there a papa bear, a mama bear, and a lot of baby bears. There were bears. <laughs> the papa bear was Robert Morris. He lived in England, and in the 1860s, he said, this Victorian furniture is a lot of junk. It's too much. It's too crowded. Yes. Too I'm going, bulky. I'm going to make something simple, rectilinear, yet with a lot of intricate details that people could only make one at a time. And he called it? Arts and crafts furniture, and it became the arts and crafts movement. When after a while, along came G Gustav, Gustav, my favorite name, Gustav Stickley. Over in America, he said, very nice, simple, rectilinear, but how do I make it in mass production? So he said, I'm going to call my furniture Mission Furniture. And what he did was he borrowed the style from the Indians in the mission sections in California who were basically building furniture that was a simply functional. They could take trees, rough hoon boards, put them together, lash them together, and then use them for sitting or eating off of. And Gustav, he saw that and he said, ooh, I'll clean that up a little bit. So he made a, a style of furniture that started around 1900, only right. went to about 1913. So around 1900, Gustav Stickley and his brothers, Leo and J.G., Leopold, uh, were manufacturing this so-called mission furniture, and they spread the word through their magazine called The Craftsman. So in The Craftsman magazine, you had all these ads for Craftsman furniture, for mission style, for Stickley furniture, and articles about how wonderful it was. Well, what Boy. we had here was the beginning of advertisement, I'm telling Boy, you. are they smart. Anyway, there were other guys who were making this kind of furniture. Albert Hubbard. The Dianetics. No, no, a different one. He had uh, Roycroft Industries and also Char Charles Lindbergh. Charles Lindbergh, the big yeah. cheese? No, no, he... He, ha he made the piece we're working on in this show. That's right, he did. Around the same time, you've got Frank Lloyd Wright making his own furniture. Oh, he was a which, big architect. Oh, which he called Prairie, Prairie Schmary. It was mission with an attitude. And is mission really taken from the mission styles? I don't know. Or maybe it's just taken from the arts and crafts. Or maybe it's taken... You know what this is? Uh, wire brush. That's a... Well, I just thought I'd use one. <laughs> okay. We try and use a wire brush every week. Well, I got this nice and smooth, but I'm going to use this wire brush now to pull out any dust that's in the pores of the wood. Can you use that's these on my glasses? There's a lot of dust here. I'm just going to go across it like this. Isn't that going to open the pores a little bit? Yeah. Well, we want the ammonia that we're going to use to go right into the wood. Well, we're going to do a burn-in now. An electric knife is your friend this to is, do the burn-in. This is plugged in. You've got to figure out what well, color to use. Well, we don't now, want to use the color that well, it is now. Well, if I wet this, right? We can easily find a color and say, hey, that looks good. That's pretty good. But we're going to be doing a fuming with this. It's going to turn the color of this top a lot darker. So we're going to go. like the color of the sides are now. Yeah. So we're going to go for like something like this. Okay. This is the exact dust that came from the top. What I'm going to do is make my own putty to fill these. I'm not going to go around and do burn-ins with these. You've got to be kidding. You could use something called a low heat stick or even a wax stick. Yeah, but uh, I'm going to do something else. So I'm going to take some, and here I got a little bit of shellac and some lacquer. What are we making? We're making our own I, I thought I'd make a little bechamel. That would be a kick. <laughs> what it looks like is a nice little gingerbread is what it looks like. Although, uh, don't eat it, even though a lot of bread does contain sawdust. Why do they do that? Well, uh, well the burn-in's dry the now. The burn-in's dry, and the other repair here is dry. Homemade putty. But I don't want to sand that. I'm going to take a little piece of steel wool. And some denatured alcohol. A little bit of denatured. I'm just going to rub. This will dissolve some, some, of, it. some of this. We're scraping with the scraper why, to get rid of... Why, why am I these? doing this with the scraper? I'm doing this with the scraper just to show another little technique, that's all. That's to get all the excess uh, homemade putty off the top of the holes. I think we all remember uh, Robert Duvall and that famous... Twilight Zone movie. You're traveling through another dimension. Um, there we have inside that little glass it's jar. Little, it's a little chair I labored all weekend over. Yeah, how long? About 10 minutes. And <laughs> I, found, 
I found some white oak and I cut it into little strips and I put it together and now it sits entombed in this glass jar with a little cap of ammonia, 26% ammonia. That we got from a blueprint making store. That's right. Okay. Now, now we're going to sponge ammonia on the tabletop. We're going to do it quickly and we're going to do it efficiently. And then we're going to get the heck out of here. Oh my gosh. First, I just got a little water on this just to show, you know, the color as it is naturally. You might want to use goggles because this stuff could burn the eyes also if you're close to it. Outside. Could burn your nose hairs too. You know, sometimes we say inside with a respirator or outside without. How about outside with a respirator? There we go. No, we didn't fume this, we said, because we couldn't, didn't build a tent big enough, but we did wipe it on with a rag. And we did two applications, and it looks kind of light, but it actually did darken it once I brush on some shellac. And you don't have to worry about neutralizing this or anything. It dries and evaporates, and that's it. It raised the grain a little bit, but I sanded it. So we're going to uh, put on the ubiquitous spit coat, one part orange shellac to five to six parts denatured alcohol. Yeah, I just want to get this edge off. And that'll darken it and seal it. There's the shellac. Shellac is drying, you can see. And it is getting a nice, uh, that fuming is really coming through. Yeah, now. you can see. But I think we might just have to stain. I might have to put a light coat of stain on it just because I want to match it to the base. So what we're going to do now is we're going to apply an oil stain. I'm going to make an oil stain with some Van Dyke Brown, some naphtha. So I'm just going to put a little, because I don't need a lot of this. Just drip it in there. So I don't have to make a gallon of it. Uh, my, now my, if you can move over, please. Which way? That way. This way? More. More. A little bit more. Until I'm out of the frame? Just a little bit more. Uh -uh. A yeah. little bit more. OK. I'm I'll, staying I'll right here. I'll just do this then. Right here. How's that? <laughs> no, no, you just hold your hand in one place. OK. All right, stop. Oh, now it's going to drip all the See, way now, through. See, now don't think that we could have just... We work neat. No, don't think that we could have just applied this in the beginning, because it wouldn't, it wouldn't have the same color. If you remember the little chair here that we put in the little box or the little bottle, it has changed immensely. It's gotten darker. And if I spray on some shellac, you'll see the actual color. You see that? Furniture on the Mend is brought to you by Deft. You gonna do upholstery again? <laughs> you mock me, sir. Yes, we are. But this time with leather. Oh, I love leather. <laughs> yes, we've wrestled a steer or cow to the ground and ripped from its hide its hide. And here well, it is. This is a whole skin we bought, right? Yeah, we bought a whole skin and we cut it in the manner in which we shall upholster it. What we've done is when we took the old fabric off, we used that as our template or pattern. Uh, if you were having a woven material covering the horsehair, mm -hmm. uh, which was underneath this, you would definitely put one sheet of muslin or something akin to that. So that's essentially holding all that stuff together in there. It's also keeping that horsehair from coming through the, the outside fabric onto your that most delicate of areas it's itchy. that would, would bother that you, stuff is very itchy. in the summer with a pair of Bermudas. Now, since we're doing leather, and horsehair would never come through leather because you either got a horse or cattle. They don't mix. It's like sheep and cattle. And you know all those movies. They don't mix. Uh, the horsehair would not come through the leather. Leather's too thick. But we put a barrier coat, mm -hmm. kind of like the spit yeah. coat. <laughs> Let's try and work it into like finishing it's, in any way all, he can. It's all metaphor in between the horse and the leather. What we do is we make our release cuts. Mm -hmm. We have cut in from both sides. Now this is a normal release cut. Now this is another kind of release cut with a little flap. See that little flap? So when we fold it over, you won't be able to see any of this nasty under bit. And we drape on both sides. And if it's too tight, then we make further release cuts. It smells good. If this is too indented, see how that's a little bit indented there? I just pull some a staple out there, and I put this on the end of this 
You can put this on the end of a needle, too. A lot of the upholsters use a needle and just shove up in there. Wouldn't the needle go right through that, though? Not, not if there's cotton batting around it. Well, and that, will, that will right. fluff out your corners, OK? And we give this another hit down there. That's good. That's, that's using your head. <laughs> Well, my staple gun has failed me, as uh, technology often does, and I've switched to the tack hammer and tacks, the old faithful, pulling the side now. And as soon as you get tired of me, you can go see what Joe's doing. Over to the real... That fast, huh? That <laughs> fast, huh? <laughs> Over to the exciting part. Where I... What am I doing? I'm shellacking the top. Yeah. But watching him shellac, everybody loves to do for the night. Well, this moves. Time. See how my hand's moving? Uh-huh. OK, now we're ready to do the final coat of the shellac. I'm going to do an open pour French polish. The technique is, you could, I'm just using a piece of this trace cloth, but you could use a, a piece of wool, like an old wool sock. And you soak it, OK, in the shellac, like that. Okay, you put it in the center of this piece of cloth here and fold it over and ball it up and it will bleed through, okay? And that's what you use. Now make sure you got no stuff on your hands. And the rhythm is a figure eight. So I gotta get started first. That's the answer to how old are you? OK, I'm ready. You know, Ed, I've been thinking. Yes? Who's going to do Froggy? Froggy, Froggy, Froggy. Rick Moranis. Perfect. That's a perfect choice. Oh, oh, Joe? Yes? <laughs> Sorry to wake you up from your your torpor. What do you want me to do here? Uh, banter is good. We're going to flip this up on its back. You need me to do this? Yeah, I moved yeah. that whole table around by myself. Oh, and you grunted and groaned. Now, there are many ways to uh, nail these in here. One way is with this thing that looks like an ice scraper. The craw. And you put these in there, like this. And this, theoretically, is supposed to space them and bang them in and make them straight. So you're putting five in instead of one at a time. I'm going to put five in, and then I'm going to tell you that this thing doesn't work. Because <laughs> I've tried to use it, and I'll tell you what, $1.98 and the damn thing doesn't work. Now, I'm going to be cleaning the back of this. Look at all that. That's my sainted Bubba's jerry curl. I got all on the back here. And I'm going to be cleaning it with alcohol. You are? Yes. Good, because I'm taking off this hardware here. See this? Got alcohol in a drawer. jar. <clears throat> I got the one piece off. And it just pries off. I pried it off a little bit. But not only is it screwed from behind, but it's got these little nails in it. And these, these handles are copper, and they're very pretty. And most people would see fit to drop them into a vat of some of this tarnish remover. But I like them just like that, so I ain't even going to touch them. That's all you want to do. If you rub any more, you're going to wind up taking a lot of the finish off. Whoa, look at that. Now we use a wax. What kind of, well, in the old days, they used to make their own wax, and that's what we've done. This is paraffin. It's kind of a white color. And this is bees. beeswax. Bees make this. So what I did was I, I took a, uh, a hand plane, and I made some shavings. Or you can take a chisel, and you can take off chunks, and then you put them into a can. This, this one's got water in it. This one's got the wax chips. And we melted it down. This is a black, dry pigment. And you could sprinkle some of this in. 
okay? Which gives you a black color. And notice I'm applying the wax in circles because I want to grind it into the pores. That was the highlight of the Mission Furniture. Listen, Ovitz, it, it's our idea. Raging Rascals, we originated it. All right. De Niro is set. He's still shrinking. He's 4'11". He's, he's, got, he's got to come down two more inches. Tell him to eat more shortbread. Yeah, everybody else is set. What? There's a problem with Pesci. He, don't, he doesn't want to do it. All right. Get back to me, baby. OK. Problems? Pesci's a little skittish uh, well, about it. He'll, he'll, he wants to work. Well, that's the mission show. We took care of everything. We showed you how to uh, resurface the top, make black wax. And uh, I think our mission is accomplished. Yes, uh, Mr. Phelps. Uh, shoot Let's me see, now. See this? This is my homage to Man Ray. With a little chair that uh -huh. was fumed in a jar that's with right. ammonia. So I'm Joe Lorario. And I'm Ed Feldman. And please, It be is nice. your mission to be, be nice, nice to your, your furniture. furniture. Let's go eat. What? I, I could go for gnocchi tonight. All right, kids, we're talking over the credits now. Furniture problem got you down? Well, then write us. Maybe we can help. It's cheaper than a therapist. And your question might even end up on TV. Send your letters to Furniture on the Man. Care of the Learning Channel. 7700 Wisconsin Avenue. Bethesda, Maryland, 20814. 20814. And we can't promise to answer all the letters because... Well, you know, we like to take long lunches. I'll give you a mission. You want a mission? I'll give you a mission. <laughs>